Park Hopper tickets are one of the most popular Disney World upgrades, but is it really worth the extra money to visit multiple parks in one day? Hey everybody, it's Chris for All Ears TV and AllEars.net. Today we're talking about whether you should say yes or no to park hopping in Disney World. And our readers have spoken. As always, the results of the showdown come straight from AllEars.net readers and social media followers. We asked our readers whether they prefer to park hop or stick with the same park all day. And there's definitely a popular response, but not everyone agrees. Let's start with the basics. What is it? Park hopping lets you visit multiple Disney parks in a single day. And yes, it is possible to visit all four parks in one day if you really try. But does anyone really want to do that when there's so much to do in each park? Park hopping does let you leave the Disney park you started your day in and head to another one, which is a big bonus, especially for people who want like a more flexible vacation or are really looking to maximize and like get to the earliest theme park opening they can and stay to the latest theme park closing because that's usually like an Animal Kingdom Epcot day uh, or Magic Kingdom. That's good because you can be like more flexible with how you're doing your trip. You can also like make a dining reservation in Epcot on your Magic Kingdom day and then like wrap up the day in Epcot and watch Harmonious. Like that sounds nice. I would like to be invited along. I would really think about doing it because it is $70 per ticket for like a three day plus ticket. I don't know, you guys have the numbers. And that's, I mean, that adds up for a family of four. That's like, I can't do math. Does it look like my job requires a lot of math? But the moral of the story is that you can do, you don't need to spend those $70 if you don't need that like flexibility of being able to go to a different park in a given day. Even if you don't want to spend a whole day in the park, like you can do a half day at Hollywood Studios and go to Disney Springs or go have dinner at one of the resorts and see a cool resort explore. Like, you know, you got options is all I'm saying. First of all, you must have a park hopper ticket or annual pass to park hop. And park hopping has gotten a little complicated since the global pandemic. In the past, it was pretty much an all day thing. And now you can only park hop after 2 p.m. To make things even more complicated to park hop, you must also now make a Disney park reservation and check into your reserved park before you can park hop. Even if you don't get to your reserved park until after 2 p.m., you can't park hop until you scan into your reserved park. You don't need a reservation for your second park. As long as the second park you're visiting is not a capacity, you shouldn't have an issue getting in. Facebook reader Heidi Stuck said, I don't want to spend all day in one park, and it's fairly easy to hop to any park after two. So in the beginning of 2021, park hopping returned for the first time since the parks had closed. However, it came back very different. Instead of being able to spontaneously park hop whenever you want, now not only do you need a park pass reservation and to have checked into that park, but you can no longer park hop until after two. So basically you need a park pass for the first park that you will be in, once you've checked into that, after 2 p.m., if you have a park hopper type ticket, you will be able to go to a second park, depending on where they're at with capacity. This has made it a lot less spontaneous to be able to park hop, and for people like myself, who are usually only going for a weekend at a time, it does make it a lot more difficult to get everywhere that I want to go. So here's how it works. Buses start running to other parks around 1.30 p.m. So you can leave your first park before 2 p.m. to get to your second park. You might find a long line to get into your second park right at 2 p.m. So it doesn't hurt to get in line as early as you can. It's easier to hop to some parks than others. For example, the distance between Magic Kingdom and Animal Kingdom is fairly substantial, whereas you can take the monorail from Magic Kingdom to Epcot or the Skyliner between Epcot and Hollywood Studios. You can tell Free Genie that you're park hopping for planning purposes, and Genie Plus will also work around park hopping. You can book Genie Plus reservations for your second park after 2 p.m., but you can begin getting those reservations in the morning. Keep in mind that this means you're spending more on a park hopper ticket and on Genie Plus. 
Reader Susan R. said, For a shorter trip, they could be good. But for a longer trip, I'd rather spend the money on Genie Plus. Not everybody has the energy to park hop. Not everybody wants to have that kind of Walt Disney World vacation. Some people like to chill, take it easy, and do one park a day. Also, it depends on how many days you have down in Walt Disney World because a lot of times I would come from New York and do a two-day trip where I would do two parks a day and it wasn't ideal and I always returned like painfully exhausted from my vacation. So I don't ever wanna do Walt Disney World again that way. But if you have the luxury to take your time, I personally think you should take it unless you're somebody who is raring to go and wants to hop all over Walt Disney World every single day, which I get too. Before we talk strategies, head over to All Ears Socials on Facebook and Instagram for more Disney World throwdowns and AllEars.net to leave your reviews for everything Disney Parks related, hotels, restaurants, rides, and so much more. Your opinion is what makes AllEars.net the go-to website for Disney fans and trip planners around the world. Be sure to check out the site right after we talk about strategies. When it comes to planning your park hopping day, there are a few important factors to take into account. The golden rule is that transportation between parks can take longer than you expect, so don't schedule dining or lightning lane reservations right at 2 p.m. One big thing to keep in mind with that 2 p.m. park hopping rule is that you're going to really want to take into account how long it can take to get in between each park. Um, for Epcot and Magic Kingdom, of course, you have the monorail that makes it a little bit easier to get in between, and Hollywood Studios and Epcot, you have the Skyliner, which makes it a little bit easier to get in between, but it still is going to take a little bit of time, um, especially because a lot of people are going to be park hopping right when they are able to at 2 p.m., and then there are the parks like Animal Kingdom that really you're only going to be able to get to and from them by bus and that's going to make it a lot harder and also a lot more of a time constraint when you are trying to get as much done as possible. For your first park of the day, you generally want to pick a park with an earlier opening time and for your second park, a later closing time is ideal. Park hopping can be a great option if your first park ends up being more crowded than you expected and you could hop to as many parks as you want as long as you scan into your initial park reservation. Reviewer Tracy D said, We've never gone without hoppers. I like being able to pop over to a different park in the afternoon, especially if the park we are in is too crowded. My go-to park hopping strat is to hop into Hollywood Studios, which is controversial. Because here's the thing, you cannot do everything in Hollywood Studios if you park hop in, even if you have Genie Plus. But I, your friendly neighborhood Quincy, don't need to do everything in Hollywood Studios. I need to like ride Tower and Rockin, um, get on Rise if like I can, but it's not mandatory, and like eat and drink a little bit. So grab yourself a Ronto wrap and 77 napkins. I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. Depending on your length of visit, park hopping can be very beneficial. If you're only visiting for a short window of time, you might want to maximize your visit by getting to every park. If you're staying in a Disney hotel, you can take advantage of early theme park entry to get started early on your day. And deluxe hotel visitors have access to extended evening hours on select nights. Park hopping can also be a good option if you can't get the park reservation you want as long as the second park isn't at capacity. Reader Karen H. said, This past fall, we started in one park with a reservation and then changed parks at two. Great way to enjoy the parks you can't get a reservation for. But keep in mind that if you're traveling with a big group, park hopping might not be the most practical option. Reader Liz H. said, When it's just my four, it's easy to park hop, but if you are talking a large group, it's hard to get things done in just one park per day, much less two. Park hopping is the most beneficial if you are on a short trip and you've got people that can move quickly, AKA if it's your first visit and you're gonna be there for a week and you've got kids and strollers and you're gonna have to pack all that up to get through transportation, it's not gonna be as easy as if you are have teenagers or you're just like two adults there on the weekend, then park hopping is a lot easier because you can zip zap zoom a lot 
more efficiently than if you're bringing the whole family in tow. Park hopping, in my opinion, it's harder with the restrictions right now, for sure. But again, if you wanna get a lot done, you could like rope drop Disney's Animal Kingdom, do everything you can in Animal Kingdom, and then park hop somewhere later in the evening. It's also really popular and a great use of your dining, of your mouth abilities because a lot of people wanna park hop into Epcot. It's usually open a little bit later than some of the other parks and there's a festival or there's somewhere to eat. So park hopping is a good idea for your mouth too. On the flip side, if you wanna get a lot done in one park, you might not have time to park hop. Reader Julie S said, no, there is too much to do in each park to fill up a day. I think the hopper pass is a waste of money. There are alternatives to park hopping if you don't want to spend the extra money on a ticket. Some readers mentioned spending time at their resort or visiting Disney Springs. Reader Monica R said, hopping takes an hour away from park time. Plus, you're paying extra for it. If the park closes early and we still have energy, we go to Disney Springs or to a late dinner. Did you know Disney World has a free theme park? Okay, I might be exaggerating a little bit. I'm talking about Disney Springs, which is technically a really beautiful entertainment district and mall, and it's free. So you can go there and spend half your day if you only bought a single park admission for the day, or you could spend an entire day there and have so much to do. You could go see Cirque du Soleil. You could go shopping at one of their incredible stores. I always go thinking I'm gonna window shop and then I see something I have to have and then I end up buying it and bringing it home. They have incredible restaurants and you know, there's always something new. Salt and Straw just opened. You've gotta try Salt and Straw. So definitely consider giving yourself a Disney Springs day or a half a day. There is no admission. It is free to go. You have nothing to lose. My biggest warning about park hopping is forgetting that it takes a really long time. The most efficient way to park hop is like on the Skyliner from Epcot to Disney's Hollywood Studios. Without any problems, it'll take like 20 minutes, but you're probably gonna hit a problem. It's gonna be delayed for a while. You're gonna have to wait for a car. There's a long line. You wait on a line at the transfer station. Don't get me started on a bus or a monorail or a boat. Like Disney transportation does not work like clockwork, even though you think it will. There's gonna be delays. It's gonna take a while. It, the bus might be full. So the biggest misconception about park hopping is like, oh, I can get from Magic Kingdom to Animal Kingdom in 10 minutes. No, you can't. So plan a lot of time when you're gonna park hop. Give yourself an hour to get from point A to point B. So if you get there early, great extra park time. If you don't get there in, in 30 minutes, it's okay, because you planned for this. Ultimately, park hopping isn't totally necessary for your best Disney World visit but you may want to consider how long you're visiting, what do you care to do, and whether you're okay with staying in one park for an entire day. The pros, park hopping lets you visit multiple parks in one day, so you're not stuck in just one park, and you can maximize your experience to do more in one day. The cons, park hopper tickets cost extra on top of everything else. Plus you're limited to park hopping after 2 p.m. And there's also that more travel time, which can add to an already exhausting day. Before we give the results, give us a like, click on that thumbs up. Please make sure to subscribe so you don't miss a video. And if you really want to be part of the fun, be sure to follow us on social media at All Ears Net. Got it? Good? On we go. Many of our readers have made it known through reviews that park hopping can be the best Disney World strategy for maximizing your vacation time, and the All Ears team agrees. So the winner is park hopping. We received a resounding yes from both All Ears readers and the cast. How would you vote after watching this video? Have we changed your mind at all? Let us know in the comments. This is Chris for AllEars.net. See you next time.